The SAT reference sheet saves us a lot of effort on geometry questions because we don't need to memorize most of the geometry formulas. In this lesson, we'll take a tour of the reference sheet so that we understand everything that the SAT gives us. Remember that this reference sheet is available in the Blue Book app for every single SAT math question. For whatever reason, the button to open the reference sheet has nothing to do with geometry at all. It looks like an X squared, and it should be in the top right corner of every SAT math section. I generally like to think of the reference sheet as consisting of four parts, basic shapes, triangles, volume, and angles. Let's take a closer look at each section. The basic shapes are circles, rectangles, and triangles. For each of these shapes, the reference sheet gives us the formula for the area. The relevant dimensions are labeled on the pictures of each shape, but just to be extra clear, the R in the circle is the radius. The rectangle is labeled with the length and width and the triangle has a base and a height. With the triangle, it's important to note that the base and height must be perpendicular. That is, they must form a right angle. For right triangles, we can use the two legs as the base and height, but for other triangles, you will likely need to use a height that goes through the middle of the triangle like it does in this diagram. The reference sheet also gives us the formula for the circumference of the circle, which you should remember is the outside distance around the circle. For other shapes, we would simply call this outside distance the perimeter, but circles are unique, so they get unique vocabulary. Notice that we do not get formulas for the perimeters of the other shapes. Personally, I think that the four formulas given here are so fundamental to geometry that you should already have them memorized. If you don't, then it's a bad sign that you will probably struggle with geometry questions on the SAT because you aren't comfortable with the basics. For now, you can use the reference sheet to double check that you've memorized them correctly but you should really get to a place where you don't need the reference sheet for these formulas. Overall, this section of the reference sheet reminds us of a very important strategy for geometry questions, that almost all of geometry is composed of circles, rectangles, and triangles. Even the most complicated shapes like pentagons, hexagons, trapezoids, and sectors can be divided up into these basic pieces. A lot of very hard geometry questions will be solved by remembering this strategy. Moving on, there are some other important formulas that you will need to use for triangles. These formulas help us understand the side lengths of triangles. Most people recognize that the formula on the left is Pythagorean theorem. The A and B are the legs of a right triangle, and the C is the hypotenuse, which is the side opposite the right angle. We can use Pythagorean theorem whenever we know two sides of a right triangle and need to find the third. Just make sure you plug the hypotenuse in for C. The legs are interchangeable. The other two formulas are labeled as special right triangles, and these are unique cases where we can find all of the sides if we're only given one side. That's because the angle measures of these triangles create convenient proportions. Basically, these formulas prevent us from having to solve triangle questions with trigonometry. I'll make a separate lesson that goes into much more detail about how these proportions work, but the overall strategy for now is to just remember that these formulas are given in the reference sheet. If you see a geometry question that involves a 30, 60, or 45 degree angle, you should open the reference sheet and see if you can use these formulas. Similarly, if a geometry question involves lengths with radical two or radical three, there's a good chance that the question is solved using one of these formulas. Simply opening up the reference chart and writing the relevant formula on your scratch paper can give you the boost you need to get over a hurdle in a hard geometry question. The reference sheet very generously gives us the volume formulas for the most common three-dimensional shapes. First, let's make sure we know the names of the shapes. Starting on the left, I'm gonna give you a more fancy name for each shape as the more basic name appears below. First, we have a right rectangular prism. Second is a right circular cylinder. Then a sphere is just a sphere. Next is a right circular cone. And finally, a right rectangular pyramid. The more complicated names are likely to show up in hard questions, but notice that the complex names still included the simple names. For SAT purposes, there's no real difference. Just memorize the simple names. Be especially careful with the prism and the pyramid. For some reason, my students confuse those two very often. You might have memorized the formulas for prisms and cylinders because they're fairly common shapes, but it's okay if you don't confidently remember the sphere, cone, or pyramid. The SAT gives us these formulas so that we don't have to memorize them. Because of the reference sheet, you should never get a geometry question wrong because you forgot the formula for a cone. All you have to remember is that the reference sheet exists. 
Before we move on, let's talk about two things that are not included in these formulas, but that could show up in SAT questions. First, the reference sheet does not include formulas for surface area. Like perimeter, surface area isn't something you should be memorizing formulas for. The surface area is the sum of the areas of all of the faces. So you can figure it out by finding the areas of the circles, rectangles, and triangles that comprise each shape. I have a separate lesson on surface area if you want more help with that concept. You should also be aware that there's a difference between the height and the slant height. The slant height is not shown on any of these diagrams. However, it might be given to you in an SAT question. The slant height really only applies to the cone and maybe the pyramid. On the cone, you can see that the slant height is the distance from the top of the cone to any point on the outer edge of the circular base, whereas the regular height is from the top to the center of the circle. On the pyramid, the slant height is the distance from the top of the pyramid to the midpoint of one of the sides of the base. If the length and width are different, then there would be two different slant heights, depending on the side it's connected to. For pyramids, you're more likely to need the edge length, which is the distance from the top of the pyramid to any of the corners of the base. If this is confusing, don't worry about it. You're unlikely to see these concepts on the SAT, except on the hardest geometry questions. Finally, the bottom of the reference sheet gives us some important angle constants. We're told that there are 360 degrees in a circle, that there are two pi radians in a circle, and that there are 180 degrees in a triangle. Again, I think you should already have these facts memorized if you hope to confidently answer most geometry questions. But this list of constants is not complete. There are others that you will need to memorize for the SAT. You should know that there are 360 degrees total in the measures of the angles in any quadrilateral, which is any four-sided shape, like a rectangle, rhombus, or parallelogram. You should also know that we can use the formula 180 times n minus 2 to find the sum of the angles for any shape, if we just plug in the number of sides for n. You will almost certainly need to know that there are 180 degrees on a straight line, and we typically call the angles that make up a straight line supplementary angles. And finally, you need to memorize the angle rules for transversals that intersect parallel lines. You might remember this as the rules for alternate interior angles. I have lessons on angle rules and transversals that will review these ideas in much more detail. For now, the main takeaway from this lesson should be that a lot of geometry formulas are given to you on the SAT. The most important strategy for geometry questions is to remember that the reference sheet exists. Too many people get easy questions wrong because they don't remember a key formula and never think to check the reference sheet. This is why you should study for the SAT by watching these lessons and experimenting in the Blue Book app. You can use the test preview feature to find the button for the reference sheet and the Desmos calculator. It's important that you can confidently navigate the app before test day so that you're not wasting precious minutes on the real exam. I hope this lesson gave you a better sense of how to use the reference sheet on the SAT. But remember that this is just the start of your geometry practice. Please subscribe to my channel for more lessons and thanks for watching.